visiting today is WTAJ TV in Altoona, Pennsylvania. WTAJ is a local commercial station, which means they need to sell and air commercial announcements to pay for all of the station's expenses and to make a profit. WTAJ TV is also a CBS affiliate, which means they air some programs from the New York based network. But we'll talk about that later. Now it's time to get to the basic question. How does the TV station send out the programs to our home sets? This brings us to the first area of our visit, the engineering department. John Black, the engineering supervisor of WTAJ. At most TV stations, the engineering department is really the largest department of all, but perhaps it's the least seen. Our responsibility is to support and help the other departments like the news, sales, production, promotion, and programming department in operating and maintaining the equipment that they use to bring you the TV programs and commercials that you enjoy. Basically, our responsibility is to get a video, an audio signal through our studio complex, from there by microwave transmitter to the main transmitter, and from there to your TV set. This involves some very sophisticated equipment. But to do this, really the TV station has available to them five main sources of information. And if we look at these de in detail, we'll be able to understand maybe how you get your TV picture and sound. One of the sources of information is a live camera. Perhaps it's a large camera, like the Norelco PC70 that's used to bring the newscast to you at 12, 6, and 11. Or perhaps it's a smaller version of a camera called a mini cam. This camera is equally as good as a larger camera. However, you can hold it on your shoulder, and by means of doing this, you can get pictures at the site of actual happening and also it can be used to produce television commercials. There's a second source of information that television stations use. It's called a film chain. A film chain is a stationarily mounted camera into which is projected two 16 millimeter projectors and a slide drum that is capable of using 35 millimeter slides. By using this film chain, we can bring you feature films, filmed television commercials, as well as slides. Another source of information is a very versatile source for the TV station. It's videotape. This may be in the form of what we call two inch tape, one inch, or three quarter inch tape. No matter what the tape may be, it is by means of electronic technology that the video and audio is recorded on the tape and then it can be played back at a later time. Besides this, much editing can be done and it makes it a very versatile source for the broadcaster to use. Some of the programs that you see on TV10 are actually recorded ahead of time and then you, by means of videotape, they're broadcast to you. There's another source of video information. It's the CBS television network for us. By means of the network, you receive many of the television programs that you enjoy in the evening. And besides this, it's a source of information for the TV station during closed circuit times when we receive news information as well as promotional information that we can use. There's a fifth source that's going to be very widely used by TV stations in the future. It's a satellite earth station. By means of satellite earth stations, it will be possible for TV stations in the future to have a window on the world where they can actually see the whole way around the world by means of satellite communications. This is used quite a bit now by many TV stations. But these video sources really wouldn't be of much use to you because they're really not a program. They have to be put together. To do this, we use audio consoles and video switchers to accomplish this. One video switcher, for example, that is used is the Grass Valley 3K. It's a very complicated piece of electronic equipment. But by means of this switcher, we can mix lap, fade, and key, and put together these different video sources into a program that you can enjoy. After leaving the video switcher, these sources are now in program form. The video waveforms, which are electronic pulses, 
are now leveled and controlled by the equipment at the studio. Following this, it is sent to our microwave transmitter, which is a high frequency line of sight transmitter. This transmitter then, by means of a parabola shaped dish on top of our studio complex, sends the image and the audio to the transmitter site where it's received. It's still in video waveform at this time. It's further processed, leveled, and controlled. And now it is allowed to modulate or is impressed upon a radio frequency carrier of very high power. This is in the form of hundreds of thousands of watts. After this, it leaves the antenna and comes to your TV set. Your TV set takes this very complex signal, demodulates or reconstructs it into a picture that you can enjoy. I hope this brief explanation of how you receive your TV picture, both the picture and the sound, will help you to enjoy your TV programs more. But maybe too, it'll help you to think of the men and women of the engineering departments that are behind the scenes and bring the program to you. Thanks, John. Now that we have a better understanding of how the programs get to our houses, next we'll find out who decides what programs we watch and where they come from.